About 30 years ago, me and my family became members of the parish that my parents still attend, Nativity of Our Lord Jesus Christ on the southeast side of Indianapolis. At that church and at that parish, I made my first confession. I attended the school there from fourth through eighth grade, also receiving my first communion, receiving the sacrament of confirmation with my friends that I had known growing up, obviously graduated from the grade school and we had our graduation ceremony in the church. When I was in high school, I served at Nativity as an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion and as a reader. Growing up, I was a server at the parish. When I was ordained a deacon, I had to do one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life at Nativity. I served as a deacon at one of my best friend's funerals at Nativity. In June, on June 6th of 2009, I had my first Mass as a priest at Nativity. And last summer, in that same church, I had the opportunity to emcee my brother's first Mass. The reason I say all of that is at Nativity, as we speak, they are exploring and have been for a while the opportunities and options for either expanding their church or building a new one. And despite all the memories that I have of Nativity and the things that have taken place in that church, if they either expand or tear down every brick of that church and build a new one, I couldn't be happier. Why? Because of what we celebrate this weekend. Divine mercy. Divine mercy is, in a particular way, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, a recognition and a celebration of the sacraments. Again, we see the white and red light coming from the side of Christ. And just as when Adam died or went to sleep, and from his side... God formed Adam's bride, Eve. Right from the very beginning, theologians, apostles, followers of Christ have written and talked about how in the same way when Christ died from his side came his bride, the church. So in that blood and water we see as a symbol and a recognition of the sacraments that come from Christ and that nourish and sustain our church. So it is the sacraments that are the encounter of divine mercy any of the sacraments. I may experience God on a walk in the woods or a walk down Washington Street in Greencastle, or I may experience God in a conversation with a friend, etc. I may encounter the divine mercy when I'm at home praying on my couch, or I may not. But in the sacraments, we believe as Catholics that every single time I encounter the sacraments, I encounter divine mercy. And we live in a world that is starving for an authentic encounter of divine mercy. Starving for an encounter with God. Starving for an encounter with, although they may not know it yet, the sacraments. There is always a fear. There was a fear at my home parish there's always a fear in every community that I've ever been a part of as a Catholic priest or as a parishioner. We like our parish a certain size. And if it grows too large, it will become something different. We like the community, we like knowing each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. St. John the 23rd, Angelo Roncalli, who's my high school was named after, has an amazing quote that speaks to this and has helped shape me as a priest in my eight years as a priest. He said this, We are not on earth to guard a museum, but to cultivate a flourishing garden of life. We are not here to guard a museum, 
such a beautiful and succinct way of saying, we are here to grow. We are here to bring people to the sacraments, to bring people to an encounter of divine mercy. So often, I think as Catholics, we can, particularly if we've been around for a long time, we can begin to think of certain things, whether it's the building or whatever it might be, as the mission. No building is the mission. The mission is bringing people to Christ and nourishing and cultivating a flourishing garden of life. The buildings serve the mission. The buildings are not the mission. I know because I've been in parishes that have died out and the buildings close. The mission goes on. The buildings do not. And so we are here to consider and recognize the fact that we have an opportunity before us in our parish. It's been formulated and prayed about and talked about and discussed, etc. We have an opportunity to expand, to allow more people access to the sacraments, to an authentic encounter of divine mercy. We currently, with our three masses that we have, have seats for 540 people, which is 17% of the Catholics in Putnam County, let alone the non-Catholics and those who are not here yet. When I was at that parish, my home parish growing up, I remember my brothers and I would sometimes talk about, you know, we, we were kind of got proud that we'd been veteran members, right? So we kind of, you know, oh, who are those new people? You know, we're, we're the, the savvy veterans. And there was that part of that, you know, it was kind of like, I remember talking about it a couple times and on the way home, my mom was like, kind of corrected us. She's like, that's, that's arrogant. Just stop talking about that. We get an insight into a thriving, flourishing garden of life in our first reading, the early church. And it says in there, it says, they were being added, Christ was adding to their number daily. Daily. And how many, how many parables are there that Christ says, where he basically says, it's not about who's new and who's been here 30 years. The brand new person, we had 18 people lined up in front of this altar last Saturday who joined our church. They don't have to come and burn incense, you know, at the altars of people who've been here forever and ever. They're members of the church. We're all equal, right? And so there's a fear sometimes, oh, we can grow too large and things can happen and, you know, we need to keep things as they are. That's a museum. That's keeping things as a museum. That was not the mindset of these apostles in the first reading and the followers of Christ, these disciples. It says other places that there were thousands joining the community each day. There are 1.2 billion Catholics in the world, which means we have 6 billion more to go. 6 billion. We have a lot of work to do in Putnam County. It's the same thing. I think we are, we, we are presented with an opportunity to open our doors wider to allow more people access to divine mercy. And I think we have to make sure that we are recognizing that unlike lots of other earthly institutions, the church is meant to keep growing and it loses nothing of its mission when it grows. You know, like if you have a euchre club, a euchre club can grow too large. And it can kind of be like, now it's lost its point. I don't know anybody, and we're here. The Euchre Club, part of the Euchre Club is that we've all been doing it forever, and we all know each other. If the Euchre Club grows too large, then the Euchre Club becomes, begins to lose its purpose. The Elk Lodge, or the Moose Lodge, or whatever other lodges, right? These clubs, this social organization, all these things, yeah, they can grow too large. That is not the Catholic Church. People often sometimes talk about it, you know, well, you know, all those big parishes are cold and distant. I've been a part of the biggest parish in the archdiocese 
2,800 families. There was amazing community there. Lots of things going on, just like there is at St. Paul's. And this is an amazing community. But this fear that like, if we grow too large, or if this parish gets that big, or there's a, a certain threshold we have to cut off and say, oh, now we stop inviting people? Now we, we, we run out of room? That's not Catholicism. That's protecting a museum not flourishing a garden of life. So as we think about divine mercy, I just hope that you'll pray. I've been praying for two years the same thing. Lord, help me know how to pitch in. Help me know how to help make this happen. I was telling people, you know, I, I didn't come to St. Paul's and think, boy, I hope there's a capital campaign. You know, I hope that that's what we need to do. This is going to be thousands of hours for me. And my, like, it's not sympathy time, but I'm just saying, right? Like, this is something that is before us at this moment in time. We have an opportunity again to allow more people to have access to divine mercy and the sacraments. We'll, and I, and I, I just invite you to pray about that. Pray about what you might commit to that. In your pews for the next couple of weeks, there are the, the pledge cards. You're welcome to take them home. You're welcome to wait. You're welcome to pray more. You're welcome to... But in a couple of weeks, we'll process forward right before the gifts are brought up. I think that's a perfect time. You know, you as a family or as an individual can come forward and bring a, bring a pledge card. We'll place them in the altar. It'll take about 60 seconds. But I just hope that you, that you pray about it as a family or as an, as an individual. Lord, what, what are you calling us to do? What are you calling us to be at this moment in our parish's history? And if it gets to that point two weekends from now and it's time to bring that up and you've already made a commitment, you're welcome to just write, already made a commitment. If you're like, Father, this is the worst idea in the history of the Catholic Church, you can write that down. But again, I just hope that we recognize that we stand, I think, at, a, at an important moment. And as we think about divine mercy and the sacraments, all the grace that's come to you and I, we have to want that for other people. Are we out inviting other people? Are we out encouraging other people as the early apostles and followers of Christ? Can we say that there are numbers being added to us daily? Or are we kind of done and ready to kind of wall it off and say, we've reached the number that we like? I'm excited about it. There's been a lot of great work that's being done, and I love being your priest and love having the opportunity to help provide the sacraments to you and to all those in Putnam County. Please continue to keep our effort in prayer and continue to invite others to experience the grace of divine mercy in their lives as well.